had to estimate more than a couple weeks worth of work. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so a few people, and you've been, you know, responsible for getting your estimates. Um, how many people have had problems with their own estimates? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> right. I think it's why I estimate. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. It's one of the hardest things in our business to get right, and um, the agile kind of way says, well, we'll go through and estimate just this short little bit of work, and uh, and we'll take it from there, and we'll just do that again in a couple weeks, and we'll do it again and estimate the next couple weeks, but. Whether you're working in a big company or a small company, or you're working for clients or not, uh, you know there's there's capital and other resources that are being committed to some project, and whoever's responsible for that wants to know how long is it going to take and how much money is it going to cost. And it's it's really tough when you can't either either you're being really honest and you say I can't answer that question. They don't like that answer. <laughs> or um, or you do your best, you punt, you come up with something, and it's wrong. <laughs> that, that also is a bad situation. Um, and if they haven't embraced that agile uh, way of uh, thinking, you may have to introduce it to them. That's a whole separate topic, how you get someone to, you know, to understand agile. So, um, you know, estimating is important, mysterious, tricky. Um, there are two kinds of uh, estimates, or well, there's a variety of estimates starting at, you know, <laughs> over on the left hand side we have wild ass guess. Uh, you know, that's like, it's going to take, I don't know, six, eight weeks <laughs> um, to something where you have complete wireframes, somebody's written up a bunch of really detailed uh, behavioral uh, 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 description of what you're trying to build. And, uh, and the developers who are actually going to do the code have estimated the work, right? That's like the gold star standard. If you could have that, you could pretty much estimate. But that's really like big design up front. It's not agile. And um, my, my sort of idea is like there's something in between. What, 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 what can we do to like get an idea of how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost without necessarily doing you know, three weeks of analysis and, um, de and then pulling people off whatever they're doing so they can estimate in detail all the, all the different tasks and chores that are part of making a system. Um, so, I, I'm working towards uh, a model uh, that is going to help us do that and it's a, it's a heuristic approach. Um, which means it's based on experience. So you're kind of re refining as you go. And it's easier to do in systems like a, you know, a vanilla Rails app that is some, some CRUD, some views, some, some you know, different parts. If you've, did, if you've done two or three or five, ten Rails apps, you know what's involved, right? Uh, it gets a little easier. But there are variations that can throw a wrinkle in, in anything. So my idea is, you know, First, we start with uh, refining our WAG using heuristic techniques based on experience. That is, uh, we build. How many of you use a point system to estimate uh, features or anything like that? Anyone using Pivotal Tracker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You 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 estimate things based on points or hours, and you have a rough correlation of you know points to hours. Like uh, you know, I can get so much done in a half day. What's your typical uh, sort of unit of time, like unit of work that you think of? Uh, half day? <laughs> hour? Half day. I mean, sometimes you say, ah, that ought to take me an hour, but if all that stuff around that hour <laughs> that they made me use that, that one hour took you all morning. <laughs> so, so maybe you only get two of those a day or three, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, points are not hours. They're proportional to hours. Everybody has their own idea of what, you know, how their time or their team's time factors into points. Um, so when I'm looking at a big system that's just kind of somebody's big idea, and maybe they've given me a document that is what they think is like a really good spec, right? <laughs> they think they've got it all figured out. <laughs> and really, it's a bunch of bullet points with like, <laughs> 
you know, where you have to fill in a lot of detail. But at the same time, you can't necessarily go through that process without giving them some guidance. You know, are they talking about uh, something that's going to take months or, 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 or you know, a year? Uh, you know, who knows? Um, it really depends. So what you can do is begin to drill into each feature and guess a number of points. Now, this is hard to do if you're not experienced. This takes an experienced developer. You kind of know what's involved in various things, and you've seen it before. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. To, to do the user manager part on the admin side, that's going to cost, you know, it's going to be about 10 points or whatever it is. You know, whatever your uh, experience tells you. That's still not a good enough. It's still a lag. Um, it's a really kind of an amateur method, and you're going to get burned if that's what you're relying on. So what I'm trying to do is just drill down into another, you know, another level of detail um, based on some things that are important to whoever's building that system or having that system built. Um, the complexity, the size of the system, and the polish or the app. So these are all factors that are going to affect the, the cost or the time that goes into what you're doing. Uh, what, do we, what do we mean by uh, complexity, you know, size and polish? Everyone knows <coughs> instinctively, but um, let's think of the size of the system in terms of maybe, I don't know, how would you think of the size of the system? Uh, you could count the number of models involved. That's my, usually my first guess is like, how big is your database, right? If someone comes to me with an existing app, that's all I ask them, like, how many people? <laughs> what do you... What do you have? This is a big difference between a system with 20 tables, 100 tables, or 500 tables. <laughs> um, the number of views. Um, so you want to think of that as uh, you know each 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 uh, each part of the crud, or um, you know there's obviously views that don't necessarily fit into a simple crud. A lot of them are compound, and any well-designed app is going to you know some views are going to do a lot of different things. Uh, so they'll be more complex, and then there'll be simple ones. Uh, the UI polish, uh, that's what I think of in terms of just how pretty it is, and and how smoothly it works, everything. Uh, there's a few other variables here, you know, number of external integrations, you've got social media sites, or you know, you've got to plug into Facebook or whatever, uh, maybe you've got an API that you're exposing, um, how complex is that API? How much are you going to try to push through that? Uh, and you know the number of oddball new technologies that you're going to throw into the mix. So you know your vanilla Rails app or something that you're very may be very familiar with. Great, you know very well what's involved. Uh, as soon as you get into uh, some new framework or new thing that you're going to throw in there, or part of it. Uh, maybe you're doing it because the client wants it, or you just think it would be a great thing to learn. <laughs> you're just you're learning it. <laughs> all these things, <laughs> all these things matter. I've been on big projects where uh, they went, you know, we got to have Mongo, so they built everything to Mongo, and then they realized, oh, but we we really can't do everything in Mongo. We need a SQL database too. And then eventually, on that project, uh, it uh, it ran into a bit of a crisis. And another firm was hired in the background to look at what what was going on with that project, and they said, "Well, you really shouldn't have used Mongo at all." And based on that, the company lost the, the project and got moved over to another company. It's a big, big problem. Um, but it's you know just saying that this is technological. You know, we could justify the technology, and make a case for it. If it's different, if it's not what everyone knows really well, it's going to take longer. Yes, that's right. Um, and it's not only going to take longer, it's, you may not know how much longer it's going to take, which is really kind of the heart of the problem on estimation. Um, high performance or scalability, people will come to you and say, it has to have support so many thousands of users and blah, 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 blah. You know, do you have those users now? How are you going to get those users? Do you need to spend all that money now? It costs money to build a really scalable system. Maybe you don't need to spend that right now. I always push back on that. Um, I had a client a few years ago who, uh, you know, it's got to support 100,000 users concurrently off the block, you know, out of the starting gate. 
I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Trust me, you're not. It, let's build a simple thing, and if you want me to go and make it for 100,000 users, you can pay more money later. You know, he didn't want that. He wanted it for 100,000 users right up front. Guess what? The system never got 100,000 users. <laughs> so, it's a waste of money. Unfortunately, or fortunately for them, money wasn't a problem. 